Welcome to the Northern Affinity Video Podcast. During this session, we will be having an unedited discussion with an expert. And what I'll be planning to do is during our discussion, get them to teach me something. Teach me about something that's of interest, but also they are an expert in. I'm Michael Edwards and I'm the founder of the Northern Affinity. And I will tap into our wonderful community to bring you along on my drive for self-improvement and my desire to learn. So please connect with me on, on various social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. And I'd love to hear from you what, what subjects you'd like to learn more about or what subjects you think it'd be good for me to learn about. So please, you know, get in contact and let me know. All the details will be in the show notes and you can send me an email or contact me by the, by the various platforms. I really hope you enjoy the show. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of the, the Northern Affinity Video Podcast. Um, as you can see, for the people on the video, you can see on the screen, but for those on the podcast, we're, we're going to talk today about how Simon's going to teach me how to choose the right CRM for my business. So welcome, Simon, first and foremost. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, no, great great to have you on the podcast. And I think this is a really interesting discussion because I think it's a, one of those things that maybe people don't look into as much as they possibly should. Um, or could um, at various points within their business. So I think there's, I think there's some really interesting stuff from that. Uh, I mean, before we kind of jump into the CRM stuff, do you want to just tell us a little bit about you, Simon, sure. and, your, and your business and what you do, and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, sure. Um, my background has always been process and uh, data driven. Um, I spent 30 years within the print industry, uh, implementing and improving solutions within businesses. Uh, and then the last 13, 14 years uh, at SJR.digital, um, really helping small and medium-sized businesses improve their processes online uh, and inter and engage that with their internal processes. Um, so, yeah, it's it's all been about improvement, really, and process improvement uh, for me and, and helping those businesses um, benefit from what the big guys do. No, absolutely, absolutely Simon. Thank you for that. I mean... So kind of jumping into the subject today, what is the issue around this? You know, why is it so important that, that someone has the right CRM? But actually, should we take a step back? Should we, do you want to explain what a CRM is first? It might might be a good way to start, actually, and then sure. we'll talk about that. Yeah. Sure. So CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. It's usually um, a software of some sort. Um, in the majority of cases, connected online. Um, what it does is centralize uh, data for a company. Um, so a company who may have had a record book for inquiries that were coming in, uh, they may have notes about customers um, and dealing with customers, and it centralizes all that information. Um, it streamlines that, that information and allows them to manage it in a proactive way as, as instead of a reactive way. Uh, the advantage of that is that it it, it stops them missing opportunities. So they may have they may have some inquiries in and then forget to chase up a client or, or, or a lead. Uh, it helps them engage with their customers further um, by integrating with their email. Um, and it also helps them um, grow their business in a structured manner. It brings um, visibility to the management within the company so they can see the leads that are coming in, the conversations that are going on and how how they can better improve on that within the company. Uh, so it's a, it's a useful tool. It centralizes their data and becomes the backbone, if you like, of their lead generation and customer service. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things, hasn't it, that's really developed a lot in, and been ac more accessible in the last few years as an online. I remember first using a CRM myself in probably about 2005, and it was kind of, I had to be very bespoke, and it was a bit clunky, and it didn't connect to anything and all that kind of stuff. And then probably over the last few years, the, the kind of the, the growth of some like probably Salesforce is probably the, one of the most common known, and the likes of HubSpot and Zoho kind of really, it's really developed, hasn't it? And and yeah. now is a service that's available to anyone, no, no matter how, how big or small the business is. Indeed, and you know, and they they all do different things as well as just doing the same thing. So there's some core information that they deal with, um, but then they all have their own own quirks and um, abilities, if you like. Uh, and that's and the key thing for the customer is really to um, 
to understand what they are uh, and what fits with them as a business. Um, because you can have things within the CRM that you'll never use, and therefore, I potentially wasting wasting your money. You know, um, it's getting the right fit, which is the key thing. No, I, well, absolutely, and we'll cover that in a little bit later. But I, I guess, kind of going back to the original question, you know, why is it so important? I know you've kind of half answered some of those things and what you've been we've been talking about there. But why is this so important for businesses of all sizes to? Uh, firstly, I guess have a CRM of some sort, and and uh, probably important to say a CRM could be as basic as a spreadsheet um, to to the more uh, advanced systems. But how important is that to get it right? I think I think the the big important part, if you like, is the fact that they could be losing money, they could be missing out on opportunities, they could be um, duplicating the information they've got within the company. Mistakes can be made when you have duplications. And I think it, it's reducing that down to a manageable uh, process that will help them then grow their business. Absolutely. So if, I guess kind of going to the first thing that people may experience, obviously, is, is, is choosing a CRM to use for their business. And be interested to know from kind of your experience and experiences, sorry, the, the common mistakes that people make in, in, that, in that process. Yeah, I, th- I think the biggest mistake is Googling it uh, finding one, liking all the the lovely graphics and and what it does for you, um, and then just buying it. Um, I I think the the key to anything is making sure that you get that fit. Um, so we tend to talk to customers about um, how how they need to really understand first. You need to you need to understand what you're doing within the company, um, and we have we have a, a set number of key things that you need to do before you really approach a CRM company. Yeah, and I guess there's, there's probably important to know as well is the difference between, you know, if you're a micro business, you know, it might just be you or three or four people in the business. Um, yeah. You might have a few kind of, whether it's associates or people who use the CRM with you. And then obviously there's, there's bigger businesses that need hundreds of people to access. Yeah. What kind of things, maybe should we cover the micro business types and what kind of things do you think they should be looking for um, to help them when choosing a CRM? I think they need to they need to have the best fit for, for their business. So what I would do, there's a number of key steps that you really need to do before you, you go out and look for one. Um, you need to understand the processes that you're currently doing. You know, how do you currently get your leads? Where do you get your inquiries from? How do you deal with the cust- the lead that comes in? Um, and what information do you record at the point of getting that, inf- that, that lead? And then from a customer service point of view, how do you currently deal with your customers? You know, what information do you pass to and from your customers? And do you, do you constantly, do you service them? Uh, you know, do you, do you just have dormant customers in your list, as it were, you know, and, and a lot of businesses do. I think we all do really to a certain extent. Um, have customers you haven't spoken to for a year or so. Are you again missing out on opportunity? So when you've documented that, you then will have an idea of how big this 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 task is. You know how how much information do you need to pass through the business through a potential CRM, um, and then really just look for um, a CRM that matches the most things within your process. Yeah, um, because you don't want to be spending. A, a large a large amount of money for something that you will only use 10 percent of for instance so um it's getting that right fit um so you know crms that say we help small businesses is a good starting point but always compare it to what you need as opposed to what it's offering you yeah when one of the experiences for myself actually on, on the around crm is is looking at something that means i have to use as little number of, of of um platforms as possible because that you know from my experience as crm whether it's your marketing email marketing uh might even be your finance for your business as well it yeah. if you can use as few of those as possible it just makes it a little bit simpler there might be ones out there that do more in a kind of more all singing all dancing but actually just having something that reduces the amount of things you need to access on a daily basis means you're probably going to use it more and better would that be fair to say yeah absolutely you know you you want you don't want to be chopping and changing between 
pieces of software or solutions that you use or going from a spreadsheet to a, a, a CRM or from a printed a book that you write in for it, write in for it, for example, you need to have you need to have the right mix, um, but bring it all together. Uh, and if you can see it all on your desktop and you know where you are and the tasks that you have to do, the calls that you're making, the emails that you're sending, all that sort of thing, then it becomes more efficient for you um, and it works with you rather than you working for it, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's really important. It's yeah, and I think... Make it, make it relevant. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people, it's that making sure you use it right as well. And we'll go into that in a, in a second as well. But this is kind of where the decision is important is, you know, I've I've found, I mean, you maybe look to change CRMs. And, and one of the issues around that is it's there's a little bit of a better devil, better the devil you'll know sometimes. And so doing that work up front and understanding what it's all about. And the other thing, obviously, from my experience, it's understanding what it doesn't do as well is just as important because uh, you know, there's lots of different ways that they have these CRMs out there, but some of them are quite often, often in steps in terms of um, the amount they charge. Now, whilst we'd all love the all singing, all dancing, because it do a lot of things, the you know, budget does come into it for a lot of people. So, you know, how important is that you, you spend that time doing that research? And like you said, it's not just a Google search to start with and go with the first one that looks looks pretty. It's extremely important because you you could go down the road of um, investing your time and your money in a solution, um, and then in a month's time you say, well, actually, I needed to do this as well, and suddenly there's there's a step up in cost. So you need to be aware of all of that because um, yes, you want to grow your business and you want a tool that will grow with you, um, but you need to know that maybe in you know in six months' time you're going to add a new functionality and it's going to cost you X amount because um, these are growing animals and you know, these uh, these CRMs do want you to upgrade. You know they, this is this is the whole thing. They they do want you to keep adding adding extra services into into the mix, um, but you have got to make sure that it works with you and your growth. So you don't want to be having to jump up to the next level. When you're not ready to do it as a business um, and, and make that investment so yeah i'd like to also say that at this point any crm that you do go for certainly if you've got a, a small team of people or even a large team you need to have buy-in because you know you could do the research you could you could um find the solution you feel fits the business you could tell the team we're going to do use this now and nobody is on board with it so then you've invested all that time, you've invested that money, and then nobody uses it properly. So you, you really have, right from the start, you've got to include your team in that, in that process of identification. Because the element, the small element that, that they use, they've got to buy into and they've got to use it for you. Um, I think that's right. And I once, I, many years ago, worked in a business and they, they implemented a new CRM and kind of got pushed on us and which is you know obviously the every everyone can't be involved in every decision but um it didn't work for what we wanted to, to do it wasn't the right one like i said this is quite a while ago and a lot of them have changed since then but um that implementation which i think is probably a good time to go on to that now is so important isn't it that um initial stage when when someone first starts using it so yeah let's assume simon i've made the decision i've, I've signed up to whatever platform i've decided to what do you do next what's the best things to do before you start using it on a day-to-day -day basis i think the implementation it, it again is a key key factor and i think what you need to do because because uh, these pieces of software are very large and do lots of things you need to set yourself five goals you need to set yourself the goals that are going to give you the best benefits that you can get up and running with it as quick as you can so it might be a hierarchy as far as people in the team who can see what information. It might be reporting from, from um, a, a director's point of view that they want to see more visibility and they want, a, they want a dashboard that shows them the right information. It might be the fact that you want to integrate it with email and you, you, you immediately want to stu start doing some email marketing through it um, or, you, or even your social channels and bringing your social channels into it. So whatever those, whatever those key goals that you feel are going to benefit you first they're the ones you do with your implementation 
So you, 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 once you've got those out of the way, then you can then say, well, we're all up and running. We're doing this. What's the next stage? And we can actually now start using more of the CRM and, and set some more goals. Um, but having a structured way that you can tick them off, you can say, yes, um, I've now achieved these, will mean that everybody within the team, or even if you're just using it yourself, will feel better for the fact that you've got up and running. Um, and it will it'll make the the project of implementation a lot easier. No, absolutely. And I guess there's kind of how important is kind of training the people who are going to use it to use it right? Because it can't, like you quite rightly said, they can be quite daunting because they have so much functionality. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. And this is very much from a personal experience. How important is that initial stage? Yeah, I think I think that's that's the key thing. You need to get. You need to get buy-in for pick from people within the company because they're the ones that are going to say these are the elements we need so when you when you're doing that initial review if you like of, of your process and the data within your process then people are going to say actually i record this as well though um so then that becomes a factor within your deciding which crm to go with um and make covering those off at the initial stage and getting those foundations right with what you need, uh, I will just reap benefits later on because you really don't want any nasty surprises along the way. No, and I, and I guess from a from an implementation stroke training point of view, how important is it that the people you work with, you know, you have to essentially frame it as this is a solution or a tool that's going to help you. You know, again, from previous experiences, it always felt like it was here is a thing to make your life more difficult and there is a thing you've got to spend your time on, which is not the case with them at all this is a thing that should if done right make it easier to do your job absolutely yeah exactly there's no point in giving someone a system that doesn't work for them and you know getting that buy-in and get and getting the them on your side if you like i mean you won't have to go and say this is what you're using now they'll actually be saying when can i use it because that they'll be they'll be wanting to use the system and you want you to use the crm because they can see the benefits of it. Yeah. If it makes their life easier, then they're going to go for it. And and that's, again, there's no point in getting the wrong CRM that makes their life harder. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I guess one of the other potential things to look out for is that, you know, that you've gone, let's say you've done all this bit, first bit well, you've implemented it, you've done the training, et cetera, et cetera. Is that kind of, I don't know, it might be three, six, nine months down the line to ensure people continue to use it? Because again, I, I've seen scenarios where it, that using it right has dropped off. Yeah. And then to unpick that all and bring it all back can be quite a difficult process. So yeah. is there anything people can put in place to make sure that kind of, that Ab implement that usage continues? Yeah, absolutely. So from a, a director or, or owner's point of view, um, key performance indicators are, are, are key, excuse the pun. Uh, but you know, having a dashboard and understanding what and seeing what's going on will immediately highlight the fact that things are or aren't being recorded through the system. You know, it's it's the age-old problem. I remember years ago, um, we had a we had a, we were in a large large office uh, in, a, in a large corporate, and people had spreadsheets. One one guy one guy was keeping his own little spreadsheet, which was a, which was completely different to everyone else's shared spreadsheet, and he went on holiday for two weeks nobody knew what was going on you know i mean so because he'd gone down his own process route and 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 that is why when you have a a solution whatever it is uh, whether it's a crm or, or a management information system within your company when you have something that everybody works to and is centralized then you can a you can see what's going on because it's all in one place um b it becomes the way things are done not not allowing people to sort of slip from that and see you can actually see when it's not working um, yep. and i think that's really key um, so yeah you know if the vis if the information is there and visible um, then those indicators those kpis should be then trackable and and you should be able to then keep on it on top of it as well yeah, and I think one of the things with, with CRMs as well is, is maybe people who've had experience, maybe similar to myself, where they've used it in 10, 15 years ago and then do, not done much with it recently, is 
it probably does a lot more now than people expect and we've kind of probably yeah. the most obvious stuff is that kind of sales type process but you know yeah. I, I i saw one recently where you connect all your social media accounts up and you can you can do all your scheduling your posting from there and it also yeah. gives you all the um, the metrics as well and to, to keep a track on these yeah. so you'd have to go to the individual platforms yeah. or it might be that the, the a lot of them integrate to all sorts of with all sorts of different platforms don't they whether it's email clients or again social media platforms is there anything else that kind of things that maybe people play, people don't expect a crm can do because it's a bit like you know you don't know what well, you don't know i think i think when you think about um a crm you, you you think that it's got to be able to connect into other things or pull information together and um, you know integrating the forms in, on your website in, straight into the crm it's a great lead generation opportunity uh chat so you see the chat pop-ups on websites all that, all that sort of thing back into your crm but you can have uh, you can have project management within your CRM. You can have um, you can have uh, support um, yeah, uh, tracking within your CRM. So you can put support tickets into the CRM. Anything that is dealing with a customer um, or dealing with a lead externally can be pulled into this one area. Um, and as I say, they all all the CRMs seem to have some core functionality which is the same but it's the it's the extra bits that may or may not relate to what you do and what you want uh which are the, the, the key bits to do and, that, and that's getting the right thing you know it's uh yeah it's really important at that stage to do that because they do do lots of things as you say yeah and i think probably a good example is you know, we i use a crm um and you you just touched on there the forms on the website so when someone if someone fills an inquiry form or any form on our website it automatically drops into our crm which then also automatically emails the individual to say essentially yeah. thank you for your inquiry here is some information and it, it, i suppose it almost buys you time to make that connection as well so you, you've you've got straight to the person it's just a brilliant time saving it creates a task for me then to follow that yeah. up a, a number of days afterwards that type of thing um yeah it's relatively simple things that save considerable amounts of time, actually. Absolutely, you know, email sequencing um, is is quite a key part of a lot of CRMs. Um, in that, you know, someone, as you say, they put an inquiry in, you or even if you were to uh, put a price, a proposal to a, a client through mm. your CRM, you know, you can then automatically chase them up three days later, um, and you can automatically create. A, a task to remind you to follow them up so many days later so all of that sequencing can be done and that will again take more work away from your desk and allow you to manage it in a proactive way as opposed to thinking oh cracky i didn't ring that uh, i didn't ring that customer yesterday or i didn't email that person yesterday um, and missing that opportunity um so yeah making it making it work for you is a great advantage you know and, and having having that tool available to you is is uh is really useful and if if you're making making more sales out of that process and you're you know you're, you're not following you're not losing the leads then the cost of a crm becomes an asset and an investment yeah. as opposed to as, as opposed to a cost yeah and, and, and i think it's really important kind of i touched on it a little bit at the start now about how Maybe how CRMs have changed over the last few years to become more accessible. Now there is there's free versions of a lot of them, isn't there? That you can yeah. get as a, as a starting yeah. point, and most of them do like a I don't know thirty day trial type thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great opportunity to kind of have a little bit of time, maybe put some dummy information in there. Just I mean, there's no there's no substitute, is there? Just for taking some time and just clicking around and pressing buttons and getting used to the feel of it before you yeah. implement it on a full time basis. Absolutely, yeah. But do but do choose the one that's going to tick the most boxes to start with. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Fantastic, you, Simon. You won't get the value out of it. But, uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, is there anything else that you think, any kind of tips or maybe any particular um, platforms that you'd recommend people look at to start with, the good guns, because there's, there's lots out there um, as, as at least starting points? Yeah, I, I think... The platform thing is is a is a funny one because again it's down to requirements. I think that the, the key pointers really are, you know, um, 
really look at your own business look at the information that you you're 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 using and the process that you currently have um then once you've done that um go out and look at what the crms are actually doing for you at the moment so they will all have lists of functionality that they have and you can compare those functionalities against your list if you like um, and once you've once you've done that then trial a few you know trial no, no more than three but give them a go and see how they fit with you and your business uh, before you make any decision um, and then take that step to go for one but also always include everybody in the company and um, you know who is going to use it because it is their system you know and they will use it yeah no, um, absolutely so yeah thank you simon like I, I, I know you do a lot of this work with businesses and help them support them um kind of you know not making that decision but help them um understand what's important so if, if anyone wants to kind of get hold of you and find out more about you where what's, what's the best things to do and where the best places to go yeah, well, you can find me on LinkedIn and um, um, on my website, which is sjr.digital. Uh, we have, also have a page on there, which is about the CRM implementation process. Uh, and you'll see that there's a link on the homepage there. Um, uh, you can you can email me on simon.read at sjr.digital. Um, and um, yeah, I'll be happy to have a, a chat, you know, half hour chat, no problem at all. Um, it'd be uh, great to. Um, I love talking CRM, so if anyone wants to talk about <laughs> that, then I know. And uh, then, uh, then feel free to give me a call. We've, we've all got to have our things, Simon, that we enjoy doing. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, thank you. Really, you know, it's really, really good. And I think it's a, one of those subjects that people maybe don't think about too much, but it, it, it's really, really important because of like the, just the time and, like, I think you quite rightly said, it, it's a tool that really can help your business and. Like I said as well, for a lot of them, it is actually relatively inexpensive to get a lot of really, really good functionality. So, you know, I would yeah. advise anyone looking in on speaking to Simon and things like that. So, yeah. So thank you very much, Simon. All, all the details that Simon just mentioned there about contact, I'll put in the show notes for this as well, whether it's on the YouTube page for the, those watching the video or for the people um, on podcast as well. It'll be all there. For whatever reason, it doesn't pop up and you don't find it, contact me at the Northern Affinity and um, I can point you towards Simon. No problem at all. So finally, just to say thank you, Simon, we really appreciate your time and your expertise. So thank you. No, thank you, Mike. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, chat today. And like me, you learned something new from our wonderful expert. Uh, so if you'd like to hear from more of our sessions, please subscribe on whatever platform that you get your podcast from to hear more. Um, and also, we'd love to meet you at some point at one of our upcoming events. We, the Northern Affinity Hall Defence, all across the north of England. Um, and we'd love to meet new people and then uh, have guests along. So please come along and check out our website or all the details in the show notes. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.